Hello everyone, how's it going? My name's Adam Vox, and welcome back to part... Part 3, actually, not part 2, part 3 of my Epifan Pearl tutorial series course. In this part, we're going to cover input management, and we're going to configure a couple different HDMI inputs for a camcorder and a game console. And I'm going to show you how to set up a couple specific things for the game console and a couple things to consider when setting up a camcorder. And then we will set up recording multiple inputs at once, so either the camcorder and the console separately or together. And then setting up recording profiles. Let's jump right in. Alright, first and foremost, you have to actually hook up your HDMI inputs. So let's go ahead and do that now in the back of the Epifan Pearl unit. If you've done this already, feel free to skip this step, of course. Alright, in this configuration, I've hooked up my Xbox One game console to HDMI input A, and then I've hooked up my camcorder over here to HDMI input B. Now we're going to start with the camcorder here, which you have a view of me kind of delayed back here. Hello, hello. For camcorders, honestly, the auto, as you can see here, under channels and recorders, you have a channel and a recorder, and these are two separate things, and they're separate from the sources and it automatically sets up a few different things for you. So the channel is essentially a configured layout of your inputs. A recorder is just purely a, a recorder. Like it says, you tell it what channel to record and you put in some recording settings. Then your sources are of course your pure input sources and you can change configurations here. So first let's take a look at the camcorder. So to set up a camcorder recording profile or setup here, we're going to want to go to Sources and HDMI B, where our camcorder is. You can see here our input signal is 1920 by 1080 at 60 hertz. Here you can change various things about the frame grabber for your camcorder. And mine's about to turn off. No. One thing to note as well is some camcorders by default automatically output their overlays to the camcorder. You don't want this. You want to turn those off in your camcorder settings. Okay, so you have some frame grabber options. You can rotate the image and you know, make it sideways or make it upside down, do some crazy stuff with it. It's not going to show that here in the snapshot because it's still showing the raw recording, but you can record it. You can change a no signal image to a custom image that you will upload elsewhere. You can add a timeout for that no signal image. You can also upload an EDID file, which we're not going to mess with here. So unless for whatever reason your camcorder is upside down, you want to pretty much just leave these normal. You can customize the no signal image if you've already uploaded one of those, but for purposes, the source itself is fine. You just want to make sure it's working and that it's detected. Next, we're going to set up a channel. So it automatically makes some auto channels. So for a camcorder, for example, the auto channel is going to be fine because it takes your HDMI source. If we go to sources under the channel settings, it just has a default layout with your source or with your video source and then the audio source, which is the audio from that input as well. And then if we go down here to encoding, then it's hardware accelerated H.264, 60 frames a second, which it automatically detected from the camcorder. And then it does an automatic bit rate based on the camcorder. And in my experience, that automatic bit rate is pretty much um, automatically going to be higher than what my camcorder records internally. So it's not something that I need to mess with. You can set up a custom bit rate here. For example, 28,000 bits per second or 30,000 or 15,000. 15 to 18,000 is probably a realistic one. I'm going to leave it on auto here. You can also change some audio options. But again, 320 kilobit is the best choice as well as 48 hertz or 48 kilohertz or 44 100 hertz and stereo, etc. You can change which encoder it uses. H.264, MPEG-4, or Motion JPEG. H.264 is going to be the one it handles best and the most compatible, so I'm just going to leave this all like that, except I'm going to change the keyframe key interval to 2 seconds, as that is what's most compatible with YouTube. Next, you can look at branding. This is how you, or this is how it's going to brand some of your stuff with copyright metadata, basically. Just title, author, you don't need to mess with any of this. Again, if you're just doing a basic recording, this is what it's going to do to get you up and going. And this is what's automatically set up within the Pearl itself. And you can just leave everything as is, pretty much, if you just want a basic camcorder recording. But we're, we're going to make a, a custom camcorder channel. So we're going to go over here to add channel. This is the automatic settings and what it looks like. But we're going to make a new one. And this is called channel 3. We're going to call it camcorder camcorder we're going to use a couple different channels throughout this tutorial series so for video source you got to go to add new item and you can either add picture text or video source again we're just doing a raw camcorder input so we're going to go to video source and then it's going to have you choose which source you're using 
Please select a source, HDMI B. Currently it says no signal because my camcorder just turned off. Whoops, there we go, it's back on. That is something else to note as well as if you're using any sort of, or if you're doing any sort of, hello phone, if you're doing any sort of long-term recording, you definitely want to get, going to want your camcorder plugged in as the battery's going to die and you're going to want the auto power off to be disabled, otherwise it's going to keep turning off. Now we're just going to go with the HDMI B audio, but if you have other audio in, such as analog inputs or something like that, and you want it recorded with the camcorder audio, you could select those as well. They're going to record to different tracks. Or for example, if you want a copy of HDMI A's audio, why not? And then click save. And that's going to save your camcorder. And then if you do add images, you can save a new layout. We're going to mess with that in a little bit. Go down to encoding settings. It automatically put it back to limit to 30 frames a second. We're going to put that up to 60 and do a keyframe interval of 2 seconds. The rest is fine. Again, we're using the automatic bitrate, but we did want to make sure it was 60 frames a second. No branding rate. Well, branding, yeah, we're, go we're going to call it. Uh, Pearl camcorder and then underscore in case it adds numbers. Author, Epos Fox. Comments, camcorder, HDMI, B, input, Perl, apply. And then every file will have that meta metadata on it. Streaming, do you want it to stream anywhere? We do not. So we're going to uncheck that and not do anything. If you want that to stream to its own location, you can set that up. But for for now, we're just doing recording, recording stuff. So that's all you needed. And then recording settings, of course. Now to change the recording settings here, it's next to recorder setup here. Currently recording in AVI with a limit of 30 minutes and 500 megs. That's not right. We don't want 500 meg limit. We'll bump it all the way up to the max, which is 64 gigs, and then we'll let it record up to one hour at a time. That way it doesn't go too far, but still records what we need. And then here is the file name prefix option, and this is what we'll call camcorder, and then underscore, and then it will just continue to add numbers afterwards. And then you can tell it to automatically upload to a hard drive or network drive, or share via a network connection. We're not going to worry about for that for now and click apply. Now this is just a channel and you can start recording from the channel itself if you just want to record that. So for example, we can we can hit start recording and it's going to start recording our camcorder based on this. So hello, hello, but that's not really what we want to mess with just yet. So I'll hit stop. But one thing worth noting is if you do record from this channel, then it's going to automatically show you if I refresh here, it's automatically going to have the file which you can then download to your computer over the network connection and it will play back. And it shows the start and end time code, the duration, the file size, it's only 15 megs. And then you can also, you can click to download it. You can do checkbox to download multiple files or delete, or you can rename it to camcorder testering tutorial. Why not? And then if we open the AVI file, boom, there we are. Hello! Hello! Yeah. Okay. So next, let's configure the game console input, which again is shown currently as an automatic recording under Auto A here. But we don't want that. We want a custom encoder for very high quality gameplay recording. So we're going to go to Add Channel. We're going to call this Xbox One, because we're using it to record the Xbox One. Add New Item, Video Source. We're going to use HDMI A. We're going to use the audio from HDMI A, stretch it to fit the entire screen, because that is what we want. And this is our default layout, and click Save. Again, no branding. We're going to uncheck Streaming. We do not want to stream. Apply. But we do want to mess with encoding. Again, we want two, two second interval, keyframe, and then 60 frame per second. But if you want to change around the the bit rate here, this is where you can start customizing your bit rate. So for example, I'm going to record at 20,000 kilobits per second or 20 megabits per second to get a very high form or high quality final video file, which is very important to me. The If you want to increase it, for example, the, the Elgato HD 60 Pro records at 60 megabits per second, but that is really, really high. So I'm going to I'm going to try 40,000 and see how it handles it. And then again, you can go to recording, set up the recorder setup. So we'll tell it record for an hour at a time, 64 gigs. And then I didn't cover before, but you can also tell it to record different video files, such as an MP4, a fragmented MP4, an AVI and stuff. But I found for the best compatibility that the MOV and the MP4 files work best. And I didn't actually change that in the previous video. So we'll put MP4 and call this XB1 underscore. 
apply. We'll go back here to camcorder. But again, I did do that recording test of the AVI in the camcording recorder and it worked fine, but that's okay. And then let me grab my Xbox One controller and we will do a test recording of this. It didn't save my name. Xbox One. Enter. Save the name. There we go. So if we go ahead and do a start record here and just see how it likes our file and we'll do a little playback of it so that we can check out our Xbox One feed. Uh, let's load up some... I think Killer Instinct has some menus that move around, so we'll try Killer Instinct here. I do not have the signal split anywhere, so I am kind of working on a delayed feedback here. Alright, that was enough to get through the menus and stuff. We'll go back to our recording tab and hit stop, and then refresh. That way we can load up the video. 236 megs for that one for 1 minute and 11 seconds. It is an mp4 file. We'll click it to download it and check it out. And if at any point in time you want to delete a channel you may have made, I would leave the auto ones just because they're going to work best on the Pearl itself. But if you want to check on any of these, just or delete any of these, just simply click delete this channel. But for right now we don't need to. We'll open up our video file here. Skip forward a little bit past our game selection. There we go. Silky smooth 60 frames a second. Yeah, looking pretty good. Obviously this isn't actual gameplay, so it's not 100% accurate, but the motion is smooth and it looks good. And it's not hiccuping or anything like that or freaking out on us, so I say it's good to go. Well then, you may be asking, how do I record both inputs at once? During my review, one of the features I touted most, or touted as being great for gamers, is that you could actually record face cam and your gameplay separately, and then mix them and change them around in your post editing to get the best possible result. This is only recording one at a time. Well, technically, I believe we can go over here and tell it to start recording both at the same time. That's not necessarily ideal either, because they don't start and stop at the same time, therefore the times will be different, and they won't be in sync, and that won't be any fun. You'll have to try to sync up the audio, which isn't fun when you have multiple video sources, or anything like that, and it's just not a general experience. Although, if you do notice down here, we told them both to record, and they're both lit up red to show that they're recording, the numbers are. But that's not what we want. That's That still requires too much work. It's, defi it's definitely better than having to record them on top of each other and not being able to have any control over it, but this is what that recorders tab is for. So by default, it's set up a couple default recorders, which is just auto A and the default 30 minutes, 64 gigs, based on our recording settings. But we're gonna make a new one. We're gonna click add recorder, and we're gonna call this XB1 and face, face cam separate. I did not like the ampersand, that's fine. And then we're gonna tell it what to record. It can either record all channels, all f it can record up to four channels at 1080p 30 frames per second, or three or less at 60. So we'll tell it to record camcorder and Xbox One, that way it can record them both at 60 frames a second. And we'll tell it the maximum size here, we'll tell it MP4, 64 gigs, one hour, and we'll call it both underscore, and click apply. And then I will show you here. I'll hit start recording and it's going to record both of them at the same time and if I'm remembering correctly it records them to the same file so then you just split them out and it does something so I'm going to press start I can't see my Xbox preview but I'll press start here I'll move around on the camera move my hand around hello I'll, and then I'll hit stop so that was 19 seconds refresh the page so this shows up I do wish that automatically populated it currently does not all right it shows us 20 seconds, 70 megs, and then we can download it. So I'll go ahead and download it. But one thing's, a new thing here is this button. If you click this button, then you can tell it to extract the separate tracks. So we can tell it to just extract the Xbox One audio and video to its own file. And then the same thing for the camcorder audio and video. And then we can download, oh, it overwrote that, hold up. Let me download that file and then export just the Xbox. So then we have three files. The first file isn't going to be compatible with all video editors. Here you can see it's the camcorder, but if we go in, in VLC player, if we go to video track and choose track 2, 
it loads up the Xbox, but then VLC freaks out because it's like, oh, two tracks, why? Why would you do that? But it does have them together for archiving purposes. But then we click our subset files we created here. There's the camcorder, but if we go to video track, it only has that video track. And if we go to the second one, it should be the Xbox recording. Yep, and the second one is the Xbox recording here. So that is all it takes. And then if we open up our Premiere Pro here real quick, I will show you what pulling these files in looks like in a video editor, just so you have the general idea. So if I go to my downloads, and I drag in the both file and the subset both files into Premiere, it honestly may not recognize the two track one. We will see. I have them off screen on my preset. So this is the both file. So it has the two audio files, but Premiere does not load the two video files. However, so it has the two audio files, but it only has the camcorder's video. So that's why it said you might want to subset them out. So this is the camcorder file, and then this is the video game file underneath. So then you can resize your face cam up, and you have both recordings perfectly in sync. So the audio timing and everything's going to be perfect. The video timing, you don't have to do any sync work, and you can just resize, add your layouts, and do whatever you want. If you don't want to do all that extra work in editing, then in the next video, actually in the last video in this series, I will show you how to set up that layout automatically with graphics and everything. That way, all you have to do is hit record and you have one final video file. Keep in mind, this will require you to either balance your audio levels at least out in post-editing or to make sure they're perfect ahead of time, which can be difficult. So, hope you enjoyed these videos, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Smash the like button if you did. Subscribe for more of these. I will have the rest of them in the playlist in the description below. Uh, and I will catch you in the next one. In the next video, we're covering video file management. So, managing these video files and changing the codecs and stuff. Actually, we covered most of this here. But we'll cover it separately. And then in the, next, in the video after that, we'll cover setting up streaming locations. And then the last one, we'll set up custom layouts.